Welcome to Rugby Wisdom in Three, the impactful podcast that does not impact your time. My name is Craig Wilson and I'm your host. This show is all about sharing rugby wisdom and I would love it if you share this podcast with a friend. On today's Rugby Wisdom in Three, I'm joined by Robbie Deans. As a player, Robbie is an All Black and he also represented Canterbury on 145 occasions. As a coach, he is the most successful Super Rugby coach in history, winning five Super Rugby titles and another two as manager with the Crusaders. Robbie was the Wallabies head coach and since 2014, he has been the Panasonic Wild Knights head coach, winning three top league championships. Robbie, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much, Craig. Look, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on, a man with uh, a lot, a lot of coaching experience. So let's get straight into this. What advice would you give to coaches to set them and their teams up for success? Sure. Three decades into three minutes, that shouldn't be too hard. But um, it's a great question uh, because we all need, as, as coaches, we need an idea in mind in terms of where we're going. So I have spent a bit of time thinking about this over the years and um, created what, what I call my own compass. And I'll put it for ease of management, I'll put it into three bins for you. Essentially, the first, first focus is, is start with them, start with the playing group, start with what they want to do and why they want to do it. Secondary focus point would be a short-term focus combined with a long-term outlook. Thirdly, is what I call the care factor. Dedi- basically dedicating to your people and to their purpose. Sounds simple, but we could, we could probably talk for a day on, on each, each of them. I'll... Um, I'll start, if you like, in the first instance. So I'll start with number one, starting with them, the what and the why. You know, back in the day when I first started coaching, it was very much all about the coach. That was my experience as a player. Uh, and that was probably what I bought to coaching in the first instance. But I very quickly learned that it had very little to do with me and a lot more to do with the playing group and, and what they aspired to and, and getting their needs met. Uh, and yes, as a coach, I had a little bit of knowledge, courtesy of some background in the game, but it paled compared with what I didn't know. A challenging but rewarding experience ever since. But the more I've learned to, to start with them, not only in terms of their understanding with uh, skills, for example, but also understanding with what the challenges are, but the, the things that are getting in their way. And to, to come to understand those, you need to ask questions. Um, so it's very much the art of questioning becomes one of the critical skills. Because uh, as they say, you can't solve the problems you can't see. Um, so it's very much about empowering the players. Uh, and in terms of the motivations, the underlying motivations, the why they want to do the things they want to do, that's both, both individual and, and collectively owned. If you can work hard at identifying something that the whole group owns, can act as a, as a, a binding and, and driving mechanism, it's a huge advantage because that's the stuff, those, those underlying motivations are the things that come out when it gets difficult. So to be able to, to create and own and, and drive that uh, is valuable. In terms of short-term focus and long-term outlook, it's pretty straightforward. You know? um, you've got to deal with the first things first, what are the needs? Where, where are individuals at, where's the group at, what are their strengths, what, are their, what they need to add to what they can do, and anything they can do without thinking about it as a strength. And you need to get balance in life as well. So yes, there's outcomes, yes, there's accountabilities, but there's always going to be another day coming. So you, gotta, you need a, a healthy mindset in terms of always working to be, to be beyond where you are at any given time. And there's key, three key focus areas to that end, physical, mental, and social. Uh, and the great tendency, I think, when the game went, first went professional, we focused very much on the physical. We've now come to understand that you've got to cater for each leg of the stool or you get imbalanced and it collapses. They're all as important as each other. And from a coaching perspective, we need to just stay connected to, and engaged and engage our people to, to hopefully maximise that, that balance. The care factor is an obvious one, particularly over over time, I thought when I started coaching, I'd be coaching for one year. Um, so I want to make the most of that year. I'm still doing it. Uh, I'm still enjoying it. The, the critical element is, as I said right at the start, it's not about you. It's about your people and the things that they want out of the game. And to ensure that you're helping them to achieve those things. 
for that end, you need to be a lot more solution oriented than problem oriented. Anyone can find a problem, um, but it's our ability to find our way past those problems and, and treat those challenges as learning opportunities. Um, it's also part of our responsibility as coaches to, to challenge, you know, create some constructive tension so that we're always stimulating um, the group and helping them to learn and ultimately helping them to own that, that growth. Uh, which is the ability to lead. And the, the, the reality is they all do lead through their choices. So sometimes they're not aware of that, but the more we can help them in, in understanding that their choices and do impact on the people around them. But ultimately, in terms of that care factor, the critical thing is while we focus on what they can do and what they do do routinely, and we bring a reality to that, and that's our job is to, is to monitor and reinforce the things we're chasing, but also enter if we need to redirect uh, but the underlying motivation for us is caring for the, for the people concerned and that it's, it's about what they can do and what they do do routinely. It's, it's not about selection. It's not about outcomes, win loss all the time. So you win on the weekend or you're not in the group, you're outside the group or you miss a tackle doesn't mean you're no longer a good person and a valuable person within that context. Uh, so it's important for us in terms of our influence to engage with our people on that basis uh, because you'll find you'll just get so much more out of them and uh, it'll be a win-win.